another Hendrix High Yield Pediatric Topic Discussion. For this one, I'm giving you a different view of my office. You can tell me which one you prefer. Today I'm going to be talking about the Adolescent Heads Exam. The Heads Exam is an important component of any well child exam visit involving a preteen or a teenage patient. I typically start doing a Heads Exam on patients that are 11 or 12 years of age. Heads is a fantastic acronym and mnemonic because it reminds you of what to talk about and it reminds you what order to talk about things. We generally start with the least invasive topics and as we build rapport in our discussion with a patient, um, we move into some of the more invasive or potentially more intrusive topics as the patient's rapport has built up with us and they're starting to feel like they can trust us. The HEADS exam is one of my favorite components of pediatrics. It really gives you the opportunity to get to know your patients really well. It gives you the opportunity to provide a lot of anticipatory guidance. And it, gets you, it gives you the opportunity to role model for the patient's parents. Um, that you respect the patient as an individual, that you're trusting their independence, and that you're starting to encourage the patient to have that self-confidence and learn that independence so that they can feel comfortable transitioning into adult medicine. The Pediatric HEADS exam, like I said, HEADS is an acronym. We start with H. H stands for home. Before I start the Pediatric HEADS exam, I ask all parents and family members to leave the room. As they're leaving the room, I say this part of the exam is, are, is a bunch of questions that I ask all of my teenage patients. The answers are completely confidential, and by confidential it means I don't document them in my note. I don't share the answers with your parents or family members. There are a couple exceptions to this rule. If you are at risk of hurting yourself or hurting other people, or if you're being sexually abused or suicidal, those are things that I mandated to report. Um, but everything else stays completely confidential and they're just to help me help you with your health. And then we get started. So after the parent and the family have left the room, I close the door, sit down with the adolescent, and I say, let's start with your home life. Tell me who lives at home. Do you feel safe at home? Is there any major concerns that you have about your home life right now? And then we move on to education. What grade are you in school? What are your grades like? Are you getting the extra help that you need? Do you have friends at school? Do you feel safe at school? Um, is there anything else that you wish that you could change about your school situation? Then A stands for activities. So what do you do when you're not in school? After school, do you have a job? Are you playing sports? You can go into sports safety. Um, you can go into screen time. How much time are they spending on the computer? What sites are they visiting? Are they experiencing any bullying in social media um, or an online presence? Then we move to D. D stands for drugs. So I always ask, do you or any of your friends ever drink any alcohol? Ever do any drugs like marijuana? Ever smoke pot? Ever do any other types of drugs? And I'll list some of the drugs. Do you ever smoke cigarettes? And then I move into the anticipatory guidance around that. So do you have somebody safe that you could call if you're ever in the situation where you're with your friends and either your friends were drinking um, or doing any drugs or you were and you needed a safe ride home? You know, the most important thing is that you never get in a car with somebody who has been using any substance. Um, so making sure that they have safety about that and educating them about that, maybe even giving them some words that they can use with their friends when they are um, in those dangerous situations so it feels a little bit more comfortable for them. The next E stands for depression. I usually start this just by asking, what do you do when you feel depressed? And I'll give a normalizing statement like everybody feels depressed from time to time. What do you do? Do you have somebody that you can talk to? Somebody that you feel safe with? Would you like to talk to somebody, offer them the counseling services, talk about other things that they could do, like write in a journal um, or somehow express their emotions in some other way, and then ask them if they've ever hurt themselves, if they've ever thought about committing suicide, if they've ever tried to commit suicide, um, and if they have a plan for committing suicide. Um, and then finally I'll ask, and I ask every single time the exact same way, do you have a boyfriend, a girlfriend, or both? Have you ever had sex? Have you ever been sexually active in any way? And then I'll go into education about that. And I'll tell them, regardless of what their answer is, even if they say no, never, and they're not even thinking about it, 
Um, I'll say I say this to all of my patients, all of my teenage patients, um, that you know it only takes having sex once in order to get some sexually transmitted infections. Some infections you could get, you could come in here, pee in a cup for me, I'd find out what it is, give you the medication, it'd be done, you wouldn't have to worry about it again. Other sexually transmitted infections, and it only takes having sex one time to get them. Um, you get them, and they're with you for the rest of your life. Things like HIV, which leads to AIDS, or herpes, be with you forever. So it's always important to use a barrier method, to use condoms. Even if you're, you or your partner are using birth control pills, it's always important to use condoms. And then I'll talk about ways in which you can make condom use um, a little bit more enjoyable. Um, and then I ask them, do you have any other questions um, for me? Anything else that you want to talk about while your family is outside of the room? Um, and then I'll go and grab their family and then continue on with the rest of my exam. And that's it. The adolescent heads exam. Heads, home, education, activities, drugs and alcohol, depression, sex. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, please give me feedback. Thanks.